joining us now is Oji Ope with stories trending around the world today. Good morning, Oji. Good morning, Leila. Good morning, Oji. Good morning, Dr. Hello, Abati. <laughs> Dr. Abati, no way. It's 14 days past. <laughs> Dr. Abati. <laughs> No handshake. No handshake. I don't advise. <laughs> really stick to the leg shake. But even the president, I saw him shaking some wolu this morning in, on social really? media. Yeah, yeah. Well, take a dress. Okay, <laughs> Doctor Abati, really. Well, we I mean, shook we should this follow morning. the uh, health advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. We begin what's trending today in Nigeria. Over the weekend, the convoy of the Imo State Governor Hope Izodema was attacked in the state. According to the police, the attack took place in Mahu community during a condolence visit the governor paid to the traditional ruler and the families of some victims who lost their lives during a truck crash in the community. While the governor was inside the palace of the traditional ruler, some unidentified persons attacked the governor's SUV. Meanwhile, other reports allege that some of the youths in the community who upon sighting the governor's convoy started shouting, on your she vote which translates to vote thief, while throwing bottles and weapons on the governor's SUV. The police, however, in a statement said the person who damaged the governor's SUV has been arrested. Okay, this happened yesterday, apparently, but um, the, uh, there has been a statement by the governor saying that it was not some angry youth, which was circulating on social media, that it was a bunch of angry youths that saw him and they threw um, bottles protesting his, um, you know, the Supreme Court's ruling, obviously, again, in the state, so. Well, I mean, there's no justification for anybody taking the law mm -hmm. into their hands. Uh, so this kind of uh, conduct uh, is unacceptable. Right. And it was right. also right. a security breach. Right. I, I mean, the governor, you know, will have his uh, security details. Uh, how come, you know, they ended up allowing uh, the governor's, uh, you know, convoy to be overwhelmed by a group of uh, youths? What we can ask for is that, you know, there should be an investigation. You never know. This may not be a spontaneous uh, reaction. Right. Sometimes some of these attacks are sponsored, you know, and that's why it needs to be uh, investigated. But if this becomes a pattern, then it will be most Very unfortunate dangerous indeed. dangerous for, for, the, for, the, for the governor. But apparently the police has released a statement saying that they have arrested the person who um, damaged his vehicle. So hopefully that has been curbed in the state. And you said that he came out as well to speak on the fact that it wasn't angry as yes. the video was circulated, which I think is really important mm. because there's always that negative connotation and the word youth just thrown in as soon as an attack happens. And I mean, right. come on, it's not always youth. That negative connotation has to end. So I think it's good that he did that. Right. All right. Well, as yesterday marked International Women's Day, women across the world were celebrated in their various fields. And social media, the trend in hashtag each for equal, which was the theme for this year's celebration, was used to express cultural, political, and social economical achievements of women across the globe. In Nigeria, the Nigerian Air Force released a video celebrating women in its ranks. A woman is not easily defined. She is beautiful and wild, elegant and controlled. There is no woman like the other. It is a privilege to celebrate all the magical things that makes a woman so incredibly special. The Nigerian Air Force celebrates its women of war on this special day of the International Women's Day. The Air Force gave us an opportunity to develop ourselves. And yesterday was so amazing. I love the yeah. fact that we were just so celebrated across the globe. I saw you on uh, social media as well. Everyone was with the hashtag each for equal. I think it's so important. I think, I think it's amazing that the Nigerian Air Force released this video also. Yeah. You remember last year, um, the Air Force winged its first female uh, fighter pilot in 55 years. And I think it's such a, it a remarkable uh, thing that has been happening in Nigeria Honestly. so far with women and in their various fields. And each for equal is such an important hashtag. 
I remember last week I got an email or a newsletter from um, a news agency in Nigeria that did a report that showed that if Nigeria was to achieve each for equal, mm -hmm. Nigeria's GDP would increase by 23% in just five years. Now, of course, it's not really about the numbers. It's simply about what is right. Human rights are human rights, and women deserve the exact same rights as men. But even when you look at the economic impacts that each for equal has, you realize that any society that's not working towards that is regressive and is moving in the wrong direction. Absolutely. And yet, apparently, according to the Sherry Blair Foundation, it's going to take 257 years yes. to achieve equality. Exactly. That's staggering. Well, but I love that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Beautiful. W women's rights are human rights. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All women deserve to be celebrated, whether they are in the Air Force or... They are news anchors on television. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so congratulations to all of you, you yes. know, our mothers and our sisters yes. and our daughters, yes. you know, who make the world uh, a much better place. I think we should just continue shattering glass ceilings, right? <laughs> yes. 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 Kudos to us. Well, still in Nigeria, another woman shattering glass ceilings is the newly appointed acting president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Monica dungman Mason, who is also a road safety advocate. In a recent interview with the BBC, Justice Ms. Monica narrated how she lost her son in a tragic road accident. Let's take a look. I am Monica Dongban Mensam, a justice of the Court of Appeal of Nigeria. I'm a road safety advocate. I lost my son, Kwabdas, 32 years old, a law graduate, in a motor crash. A motorist knocked him down and did not stop to assist him. He left him, he lay there and bled to death. The government and the people taking more responsibility to dignify people's life by providing good motorable roads and ensuring that those who are allowed to drive on the road are persons who are willing to take up responsibility for their actions. Your car is not roadworthy and you are still driving it. The brakes can pack up and you will knock down and kill somebody. We will not give up. We shall continue to, you know, go out, talk to people. Women. We need more women like this in Nigeria. I mean, By the way, Justice Mensa is acting president of the Court of Appeal. Yes. And it's good to see her showing leadership, showing what the example. And this video, it's a very good advertisement for the Federal Road Safety Corps. You know, uh, the Federal Road Safety Corps engages with communities, with individuals who become uh, FRSC uh, corps marshals or the ambassadors for road safety. And, you know, with uh, a president of the Court of Appeal going onto the streets to Amazing. give back and to educate people and to ensure safety on the roads. That's a challenge for all of us, you know, uh, to also make sure that in our individual circumstances, we do something. We can contribute. All of us can do it to yeah. make Nigeria a better place at any level. Yes, yeah, so she's such a strong, powerful woman. Sure in is. that video, she also narrated how the pain was. She like literally just spoke to her son. She actually spoke to her son three times that day, and just for for him to die during that type of um, you know in that type of accident, so tragic, really tragic in Nigeria. Oh, and remember, she also talked about look, see how she stopped this one person, saying that you know your brakes are not working. Yeah. This is a serious situation. And it's too common. You it's know, too common. in Nigeria, especially, and I don't know what happens with yeah. the roads, here, with the um, traffic safety here, because like in America, you, your car has to pass inspection all the time. No you know? and, I, and I don't understand. You see cars across Nigeria driving without the brake lights, without driving without, um, you know, wiper shields and things like that. You mm -hmm. could get, you could get without into side mirrors. Yes. Every, literally every single reason for an accident is there. Yes. And what's interesting as well to see is that you wonder why these cars are still allowed to stay on the road, you know? More effort does need to be put in. Effort like the effort of this woman that we are seeing. It reminds me of another old lady. She must be in her 80s. She works with LCC. She's been around Victoria Island for years. Just pushing and pushing and pushing. She's an amazing woman as well in the same field. Absolutely. <laughs> well, shall we take our final story yes. under entertainment, right? Nigerian actor Yolo Doche have taken a contradictory stance to a recent opinion by his father, Pete Doche, on marriage proposals. 
Peter Doche recently caused a stare on social media when he called out Nigerian male men who kneeled down to propose to their women, branding them idiots and bloody fools. The veteran actor had argued that such practice was not only strange to Africa's way of life, but also suggestive that men were handing their supposed authority in marriage to their wives. Nearly three weeks after the lingering dispute over Pete's opinion, his son Yolo Deutsche took to his Instagram page to share a video clip of himself kneeling down to propose to a lady with the caption, steady kneeling since 1990. <laughs> He's going to get a full performance there. Yeah, you can see some reaction. He's going to get a performance there. Everybody there. is going to see this. Well, uh, OG, don't let me pour water on your... Oh, you, know, you can do whatever you want, Dr. You, Martin. I will always... You know, Yule Doche is yes. also an actor. He's very controversial, like his dad. too. And that picture that is there is probably from one of the movies. It is from a movie. Yeah, it's an old movie. Yeah, yes, I, I like his sense of humor. Yeah. You know, and he's been able to gain our attention. But even if he chooses to kneel down to a woman, it's his choice. So is, he's he, is he a bloody he, fool he's 37, now? He's, he's 37 <laughs> yeah, years old. Yes. He's 37. Yes. His father was uh, 73 on, uh, on Saturday. Saturday you know, so at 37, if he wishes, he could kneel down. That's his choice. Yes. Okay? He doesn't have to necessarily obey you know what his father oh, wants, yes. Father. Because at 37, so he can make his well, own choice. I think choices. it's funny, but at the same time, quite disrespectful. I don't think there was any point for it, him to do that. He could be controversial with no, this. I think, I, think it, I think it was quite disrespectful. I, no, it's not. I would not find like, it well, funny. You feel like he no. disrespected his father. Yes, no. because no. it's no. no. such a conscious society. No, I mean, that's a different thing. Let's not start with that because I'm talking about Oh, yes, I got to go that way. I think it was a good sense of humor. That expressed his opinion. He expressed his opinion. That was disrespectful. That must have a good sense of humor because if you Back, I mean, and your father is very strict. You could get disowned for that. So I think he must see, know this is what I that his dad has a good sense I of humor. Yeah, well, that's seven. another point. That's a good point for you to say. I would feel very offended if my child did that to me. To I come would. out publicly. Yes, yes because, because it was such a controversial yeah. um, statement that he made that well, went viral. Yeah. 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 You know the relationship between son and father. Yeah, I imagine. You know, I son, imagine fathers, and be... sons are just no. like bodies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're like to powers. Yeah. And yeah. maybe he didn't want people as well to affiliate him with his father's views. You know, so well, that's another that that point. Stuff. Who knows? No, I don't think it's an act of rejection yeah. of his father. I think it's a joke. It's just a joke. So. Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah. Oh, obviously, it's a joke because he was absolutely <laughs> laughing with all his emojis on that um, yeah. statement that he made. And to show the generation gap. You just said 73 years old. What they were doing back then and what they do now. I mean, I find kneeling down mm -hmm. superfluous. I'm trying to be polite. There's no point to it, really. But if you want to do it, go ahead. It doesn't make you an idiot. It doesn't it's hand over courtesy. authority. Exactly. But it, it's I, a silly romantic gesture. It means nothing. I know. So mm -hmm. I don't think it, you deserve, like, opprobrium, like mm -hmm. what Peter Doce was saying. Mm -hmm. But this, for me, is funny. It's so yeah. funny. No, he went I, and dug up this picture. He, no, it was a video. He, it was a video he was proposing to a woman, a Nigerian. Oh, <laughs> He was, he had, I just got the screenshot. I don't I, have I the video, but it was a Nigerian yeah. movie that he knelt down proposing to this woman. But you know, Pete also has been so controversial yeah. with a lot of statements that he I makes. Know. You know, I mean, I mean, it is incredible that an actor. He's I mean, defending, like I he's defending say, African he culture. He on yeah. Women's Day. <laughs> on Women's Day. Oh, His birthday is on International <laughs> Women's Day. So wow. <laughs> the irony in that. Yeah. 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 Yeah